Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. And on this week's show, we have such a wonderful combination of things. We'll be talking about Red Bataille, which is our product of the week. And uh, Red Bataille describe themselves as the Swiss Army Knife for Engineers, which is quite the claim, but it is a claim they absolutely deserve to make. You can take a Red Bataille board, which is essentially an FPGA with a wonderful hardware array of things around it, um, a really high quality analog and digital inputs and outputs that allow it to act as pretty much anything from software defined radios to oscilloscopes, logic analyzers, anything in between. And of course, it is all fully programmable and changeable via the FPGA if you can program it. But if you're like me, there's also a Python API. Wonderful thing. We'll also be talking about Robin Mitchell's fantastic Electro Electromaker Educator video about a Lego Planetarium kit, which is very cool in and of itself. You can wind it around, but he adds a stepper motor, an Arduino, and voice control to be able to say verbally, go forward 10 days and it will show the planetarium, it will move the planetarium to the right place to show you that. We have that and a lot more to get through in this week's episode, so rather than waffle up front, let's get straight on with the show. We are going to begin this week's show with our product of the week, and that is from Red Pattaya. Now, the board you can see on the right here is the STEMLAB12514, uh, which I'm just going to refer to as the Red Pattaya board uh, to but uh, there are a whole range of these boards. Uh, and on the left, you're seeing the click expansion shield from Red Pattaya as well, which allows you to use micro E click boards with the Red Pattaya. Um, we have talked about Red Pattaya on the Electromaker show in the past. We actually interviewed Nina from Red Pattaya a couple of times um, at different trade shows, once at Embedded World, and I believe once at Electronica as well. Um, and I will link those uh, uh, interviews in the description. If I was to try and give a very brief overview of what Red Pattaya make, um, they describe it as the Swiss Army Knife for Engineers, and that is very, very accurate. What you have here is a board, uh, the core of which is an FPGA. Um, it's a Xilinx FPGA, which incorporates two ARM cores, um, but, and you can uh, program the FPGA side of it to do whatever you want. You can put logic blocks on there that will work in parallel and completely reconfigure the hardware on the board on the fly. That hardware includes an incredibly uh, rich and well put together analog front end and well uh, ADC and DAC which is great for working with incredibly high speed signals um, and unsurprisingly that makes this perfect for using as a measurement device you could use this as an oscilloscope you could use this as a logic analyzer it has a full uh, plethora of GPIO pins as well that do all of the stuff that you would expect like I squared C and spy and anything else you want to do with it um, but again it's this combination of the programmable FPGA on board and a very well chosen set of hardware that makes Red Pattaya one of those things that can replace multiple things on your workbench if you want it to. Um, I think that's a decent enough introduction, but luckily enough, if I haven't given it a, a perfect introduction, I know somebody who can. Yes, what with this being a product of the week, you have Robin Mitchell on deck to give you the full rundown of it. And uh, as an engineer and an educator, Robin has a lot more to say about this than I do, although I am very pleased to see that while me and Robin work separately on Electromaker videos, we don't talk to each other about what we're working on while we're working on it. Robin came to many of the same conclusions I did, but from a far higher, more engineering point of view. Engineering is that even a word? <laughs> but, um... The core idea of Red Pattaya is that it has the hardware to allow it to be anything from a measurement device to a software-defined radio to uh, replacing a microcontroller in any project. It can work as test equipment. You can use it um, even for certain kinds of power profiling, especially now that you have the extra click on boards, uh, the micro E click board add-ons. Um, with the two uh, bus boards that you're seeing right there on the screen, um, if you're not familiar with the, the click ecosystem, there are hundreds of add-on boards that are in a similar vibe to Arduino Shields or Raspberry Pi. Hats. If you can think of a kind of sensor or output device that you might want to use in a project, Micro E probably already have you covered. But the high level of configurability about Red Pattaya, I think, is what really draws people into this as an idea. Because it sounds uh, like a bit of hyperbole to say this could replace half of the things in your lab. But with the right kind of uh, organization and the right kind of configuration, it really could replace, say, your oscilloscope without much difficulty. I've already mentioned it could work as a software-defined radio. But it's not just what it can do, it's the way that it's presented to people as well. So if you are comfortable with programming quite down near the 
metal, if you know how to program an FPGA, you could make this thing dance to whatever tune you want. But if you are more like me and someone who has maybe entered this hobby through a side entrance and has basically hacked together their knowledge from random bits of code that other people have made and sort of got a half of an, uh, an education at this point is what I feel like, um, there is a Python API that allows you to almost entirely control Red Pattaya uh, without having to get right down into the weeds and still do pretty much anything that you could do with it just within a slightly more set framework. And when I say set framework, I still mean that this thing could work as pretty much any piece of test equipment on your desk. And especially if you are a student or someone who can't afford thousands of dollars worth of kit, the Red Pattaya kit start at around $500 and go up to just over a thousand, which is incredibly good value, at least it feels it to me. It's still a lot of money, yes, but you get what you pay for and you're paying for something that is incredibly extensible and really well designed. Anyway, I hope my high-level overview here has given you a rough idea about what Red Pattaya is and why I, and seemingly Robin too, find it so exciting. Because I have had many devices over the years cross my desk for review, or simply just to give away, but I've had the chance to have a look at them first to be able to describe them, and... There are several things that could say, for example, work as a logic analyzer and a scope at the same time. Just sit there and do that job. But usually that is what that thing is designed to do, and that's all it does. A red pataya can be configured to do that relatively easy, um, but then if you don't need that anymore, it can then be reconfigured again to act as, say, a software-defined radio or a million and one other things. It really is an incredibly configurable tool, and I hope you look into it a little bit more. I can almost hear people on the other side of the screen saying, didn't Product of the Week things used to be given away as prizes to the YouTube audience? And yes, uh, that is absolutely true. We're going to be continuing doing that, and we're going to be giving away the Red Pattaya STEM uh, 12514 and the Micro E Clickboard, as you saw in this video. We're just going to be doing it a little bit later this time, as we have another Red Pattaya feature coming up, and we're going to coincide that with the biggest contest we've ever had on Electromaker so far. So do keep your eye on the channel for that. Not only can you win both of the things we talked about today, but also the the edu pack from Red Pattaya, which includes things like oscilloscope probes and uh, aerials for software-defined radios, even more expansion boards than the micro e click boards. Everything you would need to get started with such a wonderful Swiss Army knife of a device. I really think they have earned the idea of calling themselves the Swiss Army knife for engineers, given that all of the, given all of the things that you could do with a Red Pattaya board. But for now, there are links to uh, the product of the week in the description and places where you can look at the full Red Pattaya range as well. You can find that all in the blog post that I just showed you with Robin and I highly recommend watching Robin's video on it as well as he can give you a slightly more technical view into what the Red Pattaya is and what it does rather than my slightly wishy-washy enthusiastic version that I give on the YouTube channel just here. I will also leave links if you're interested in, uh, in finding out more about Red Pattaya to the interviews we did with them at Embedded World and so forth um, so you can hear straight from Red Pattaya who they are and what they are about. What you are hearing is the sound of an auto-tuned kazoo. Yes, this video has absolutely done the rounds with good reason. And if you have been following the uh, embedded makery news in the last week, you're probably familiar with Guy Dupont's auto-tune kazoo video. And uh, it's something that I had to feature in the show because it does combine the things that I talk so often about loving. This is uh, microcontrollers, and this is specifically the maker sort of end of microcontrollers. The code implementation is, of course, quite complicated, but this is using a Steed, uh, Seed Studio Zhao ESP32 S3 board, a bunch of uh, separate Adafruit components for the battery and for the power amplifier and the speaker output, um, and a small MEMS microphone, which is actually inside his mouth. When you look at this footage at the start, he is holding the microphone in his mouth under his tongue to pick up him humming. And if you'd like to hear more examples of it working, you'll need to uh, watch the video yourself, which I highly recommend doing so. There's a link to it in the description just here. Um, but not only is this kazoo um, an auto-tuned kazoo, because of the way he's implemented it, it can work as a wireless MIDI controller, as you are seeing here. This is controlling uh, Serum on his computer. Um, it can also work as a standalone synthesizer. The speaker in it can attach to a, uh, a keyboard on your phone via Bluetooth and play music. So it's a wonderful device. Oh, actually, I skipped away just before you got to see all of the nice innards of it. There we go. So as I mentioned, there's a, a, a handful of components in here, but all of which are very easy to work with and put together. Um, and the code implementation, while complicated, is well explained, albeit from a high level in this video. 
Now, I don't want to spoil it particularly. I really do want you to watch Guy's video. It, um, uh, he's uh, already got a few thousand views on it, but this is the kind of thing that I feel like should be seen by millions of people. It's such a wonderful idea. And the way he implemented it was by uh, doing the classic engineer's trick of uh, trying a few things, and when it didn't work, thinking about the most uh, radical way he could cheat it without it actually seeing, uh, without it actually seeming different to what it should be. You see, it turns out that a, a sawtooth wave sounds very similar to the sound a kazoo makes. It's as simple as that. So you replace the membrane in the kazoo with a little speaker, and that's why you're able to play this as a wireless synth device with your phone, because there doesn't need to be air running through it or the microphone being engaged in order to make sound. Now, throughout the video, Guy takes you through uh, the iteration process, getting it going, what worked, what didn't. He also talks from a relatively high level about the code and references a video I had completely forgotten about, um, which we talked about, I believe, on the show uh, uh, last year. I hope we did. Uh, I hope it wasn't one of those things that fell off the end of a show that was too full, because Rob Smith Dev did a wonderful job doing exactly this kind of thing on an Arduino Uno R3. That is an 80 mega 328p chip, and he got auto-tune working on an Arduino. And if you're interested in seeing Rob's video as well. It is linked in the description of Guy's video. And of course, that video is linked in the description of this video. It's a rather cascading YouTube link uh, situation going on here right now. Um, but I highly recommend going and taking a look at the video. If you're interested in the code, um, the, uh, the GitHub code is all available once again in the description of his video. And at the end of the video here, Guy shares his thoughts on auto-tune auto in general and what it is doing to music. And I have to say, I absolutely 100% agree with his take. But if you'd like to know what that is, of course, head to Guy's channel, watch his video, and while you're there, drop him a subscription. Um, he's been making wonderful things like this for a while, and uh, this is definitely something that I think, uh, yeah, a channel that I think you will come back to. Um, once you've watched this video, I highly recommend looking at this as well. Any ThinkPad user will look at this and know exactly what he has done. Um, and if you're not a ThinkPad user, watch the video, because uh, you're missing out on one of the classic best inputs devices for computers that has ever been created, but I might be biased. So I want to briefly touch on something which is not released yet, it's just been announced on Twitter, but it is somewhat exciting. Um, WizNet have done something I think people who work with networking and microcontrollers have wanted for quite some time, which is combine one of their Ethernet IC controllers with a microcontroller. Uh, they've taken the W5500, which is a like a, a bl basically an Ethernet black box. And I know that sounds like a bad thing, but it's not. It means that your host microcontroller can talk to this uh, chip and it will do all of the Ethernet pathing TCP IP stuff for you. They've taken that and they've combined it with the RP2040 from Raspberry Pi to create what appears to be the W55RP20 uh, from WizNet. Now, this is just an announcement um, and there's a couple of replies to it just kind of saying, hey, this is cool. Um, and, uh, you know, how about skipping a spy and using the PIO capabilities? But as it says, this is going to be an in-chip solution that uses spy within the chip. Um, but uh, that's about all we know about it so far. Now, if you already work in uh, deep in the e Ethernet mines, what am I talking about? If you already work with networking on microcontrollers, you probably understand why this is exciting and what it's all about. If you'd like to see a project that uses a WizNet um, Ethernet controller, um, this is a fantastic one for you. Uh, this is from CE Tech and the Electromaker website. And it, this is a LoRa gateway and half of the project is a LoRa gateway. The other half of the project is uh, an, an Ethernet solution to pass that data to the Blink IoT network. And there's a number of reasons why you'd want to do that, data security being one of them, speed of transfer being the other, the bi-directional nature of Ethernet. Um, and so if you'd like to learn a bit more about it, um, there's obviously there's the block diagram of LoRa right here, but there's also the side of it which is talking about Ethernet and all that kind of stuff as well. And this is just one of the many, but one of the really high up projects for just the level of documentation and diagrams and everything. CE Tech really goes out of their way to make the documentation an art form in and of itself, which is of course a, a really wonderful thing that makes it easier for people like us to follow it and repurpose this to our own means or just copy the project that they have done if we have a need for it. Um, but yes, I saw the uh, the I saw the post on Twitter. I thought it was exciting enough to talk about, and it, it triggered my mind that there was this uh, uh, CE Tech project as well. Um, there is uh, also another wonderful series uh, of someone working with the same W five five zero zero as a separate module connecting to an STM thirty two blue pill. Um, but I remembered that literally as I pressed record to do this, and I haven't actually got it set up and ready to show you. But I will leave that as a link in the description as well.
The Electromaker Educator is one of the series on this YouTube channel which comes out a little bit less often than The Electromaker Show, and that is because it takes a huge amount of effort to put together. It is another show by Robin Mitchell, our in-house engineer and educator, and um, it's always much more unsurprisingly educationally focused. But this one is particularly special. It's probably my favourite project I've seen Robin do to date because he's taken a Lego planetarium, which in itself is a very cool toy. You wind it to move the Earth around the Sun, and it gives a quite accurate view of where the Earth and the Sun will be over a certain time scale. But he has taken this and run with it by turning it into a voice-controlled planetarium with the help of an Arduino Nano uh, 33 IoT and a stepper motor and a stepper motor driver. And I can think of no better way to show you with this project than to show it in action. So, let's start by going forward. And yep, that's done the job very nicely. So once it stops, we can then start playing around with it. So, let's start by going forward. Forward 10 weeks. I love how it does the slowdown, it's very, very nice. And so you've seen the crux of the project right there. It is a wonderful implementation of bringing automation to something where it usually isn't. And I've talked many times on the Electromaker show about how much I love people doing that. And I feel like Robin has done a wonderful job here. Um, every single aspect of this is described in the video that I just showed you. Um, I, sh I, I skipped to the end to show you it in, uh, in practice, in, in practice, in focus. No, in function, functioning, in operation. Sorry, very hot in the attic again, losing words once again. I skipped to the end to show it working in function, but the video takes you through every single step, including the parts used, how they are programmed, how the 3D printed case came together, what the screen is used for. Um, and there's some really interesting choices Robin made in terms of the code and where certain things are done. So for example, Arduino boards, um, especially things like the, the uh, Nano, BLE33, for example, um, and I think the Nano33 IoT, these are perfectly capable of doing voice recognition on the board, but if you're going to be doing that voice recognition through a third-party thing like a smartphone or your browser in your computer, why not do that calculation there? This is one of the design decisions that Robin made, um, which is a really good design decision, if you ask me, because why why put all of the processing power on the Arduino when you can offset some of it if you're always going to be working with it through a third-party device anyway? Um, this is why Robin is doing the uh, Electromic Educator videos. He is an engineer. He has years of experience thinking outside the box or more realistically where things fit properly inside the box. So this project is available on the Electromaker Project Hub. I will also link it in the description of this video. If you would like to follow along, um, all of the things you need to, to do this from the hardware side are available straight from the project itself. There are shop links on every project page to everything that you will need. Uh, and of course, you'll need to provide your own LEGO Planetarium kit, although I hear that LEGO is quite a popular toy that is potentially quite easy to buy in most local toy shops. So the full project is available on the Electromaker Project Hub. I will leave a link to it in the description of this video as well. And uh, everything you need to get started is here. You can even buy the hardware needed other than the LEGO Planetarium right here in the project. If you just click on the cart here, you'll be able to buy all of the build of materials for this build. You will need to find your own LEGO Planetarium, but I feel what with LEGO's popularity, that shouldn't be the hardest thing in the world to find or source out. Um, although, of course, um, with this, any piece of LEGO or any kind of toy that requires you to turn a dial to make it work, this project could probably be quite easily converted to work with anything as long as you are willing to do a little bit of the working out exactly how far the stepper motor should be moving. Ultimately, this is a voice-controlled stepper motor project. It just happens to be attached to a LEGO planetarium, making it one of the coolest things I've seen this year. But all of the code and the STL files for the 3D print are available here in the project. You can find all of that here. Um, and as I said, it will be linked underneath this video. And uh, if you do happen to see this, Robin, if you watch this episode of The Electromaker Show, congratulations on this one. This is a really wonderful build. It really did make me smile. And you've done an absolutely fantastic job on it too. <laughs> 
that has been our show for this week. Thank you for your continued support, whether that's buying things from our online store at electromaker.io slash shop, or just clicking like on this video, making sure you're subscribed, leaving a comment, or the usual YouTube things as well. Just a quick reminder that if you uh, find it difficult to see this on YouTube, we do put the show out as a podcast each week as well. You can find the Electromaker podcast in every good podcast app. It is essentially the same as the YouTube show, occasionally with a few uh, unique things that only fit in the podcast. Um, but for the most part, it is the way to experience the show in audio format if you find yourself on a commute where you don't necessarily want to be staring at a phone the entire time. Uh, we will be back uh, relatively soon to announce, well, the Red Pattaya giveaway for a start, but there's a bunch of other very exciting and interesting announcements coming up very soon that I don't want to leak too yet too much. Um, but yes, we have another contest coming up relatively soon, which should be quite an exciting one, and I can't wait to dig into that. But for now, I hope you have a fun, safe, and creative week, and I'll chat to you soon.